I have a little bit of a, a mixed personality disorder, so I'm going to tell you a little bit of, about some of the few jobs I do. One is I run the Melma Disease Center at Dana-Farber, and I also run what is now a relatively new in the past year or two Center for Immuno Oncology. What that really is is how the immune system can be manipulated and used to fight cancer. So I'm not going to be talking to you about dragons today, but a bunny. And um, I, I can't use the, the, the name of what the bunny represents, but I think you'll, you'll get the message. And think about the bunny as we, as we go along in, in, in this talk. So uh, immune therapy for cancer has had a real waxing and waning level of enthusiasm historically. It's not a new concept. Decades have been tried where we're trying to find ways to manipulate the immune system to get the own, a person's own body to fight cancer. And whatever we did seemed to have about a 10%, 15% chance of helping people. But many sat back and said, well, that's smoke and mirrors. I don't know what's going on. It helps. Um, I don't know why helping um, uh, Mr. Jones, but not helping Mrs. Smith. What's going on here? Well, we knew the immune system was important for cancer because in the early 1900s, patients after an operation who got a bacterial infection we were seeing that their cancer in other parts of the body were, were melting away. And when they got the infection and antibiotics were not really around or they were new and things like that, that we saw that the, that the cancer in other parts of the body related to any other treatment were melting away as a response to that infection. It gave us a hint that something can happen in patients with cancer in terms of their immune system to kill large burdens of tumor. This enthusiasm came around where we focused a lot in trying to tell the cancer what to make an immune response against. So here are the proteins that we think are important, the targets that are important, and we spent a lot of time educating the immune system to make an immune response against protein X or protein Y, or taking up the patient's own tumor and manipulating in some way and giving it back as it's been crunched up and giving back, say, tell the immune system to respond to this. And again, it helped that 10 to 15% of patients, but not consistently. So it wasn't until more recently where we understand now that you can't just educate the immune system what to respond to, but you also have to take the brakes off the immune system. And what we know is that every patient, every person in this room is trying to make an immune response against cells that are trying to become cancer. And a patient with cancer is trying to make an immune response against their own cancer, but it's maybe not efficient or it has the brakes that are put on. Why are the brakes there? The brakes in the immune system are critical for all of us as human beings because without the brakes, we would get autoimmunity. Mother Nature is smart. There's a way to fight viruses and bacteria, but you have to control that. You can't let that go on constantly. Otherwise, the immune system will start cross-tracking in normal parts of the body, and you get autoimmunity, such as lupus or, or other kinds of, or, or rheumatoid arthritis, those kinds of things. So these brakes are there for a reason. What we find, though, is that the brakes are, are, are frequently uh, stopping a person from making an effective immune response against cancer. And so now the focus has been in the past few years, and really only since uh, the, the 2000s, so, the, so this, this past decade or two, where we understood what these brakes are. So the first break where we were able to show is if you took a patient and gave a specific antibody that blocks this break, you can actually cause the, the immune system to, without any other manipulation, to fight and destroy large, large amounts of cancer. Why, why the bunny here? What we found early on is even though it was 20, 25 percent, that benefit didn't last a few months. It didn't last or a few weeks sometimes. But for some patients, it lasted months and years. And now we have for the first, what we call checkpoint, the first target where we took the brakes off the immune system, five and 10 years of follow-up where 25% of patients are still alive and doing well with a cancer such as melanoma, where they would normally have been uh, passed away within 11 months of their diagnosis. So not to use the exact uh, battery involved, but keeps going and going and going. That's the theme. So, um, so one of the things we've learned, though, that kind of was part of the Achilles heel is that the responses that we've seen in patients are not like what we see, saw with chemotherapy, are not like we see with targeted therapies, where you expect the, the efficacy, the benefit of the, of the treatment to see the, 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 uh, the tumor shrinking right away. What we found is that sometimes on the CAT scans, the tumors got bigger before they got smaller, or that things didn't change much and all of a sudden would start responding weeks, months, sometimes even years later. And we try, and so this kind of stopped our drug development or, or slowed down our drug development for a while because people are saying you're not getting responses, this isn't really working. Companies are like, oh, the response rates are not that great. We're not going to invest millions of dollars to get these drugs approved. But what we found out was when we biopsied the, some of these tumors after treatment, 
there was very little cancer cells there. It was filled with immune cells, T cells, that had gone into the tumor, were destroying the tumor cells, and that by a CAT scan, you can tell the difference between what is growing tumor or what are immune cells and what's going on in the tumor microenvironment. This kind of paradigm allowed us to understand that sometimes the treatment could take time to work, and that even if things weren't shrinking, that you could still get a long-term benefit. So let me give you one patient example that kind of struck in my mind why we get up in the morning and go to work. Um, so a, about a year and a half or two years ago, um, I met this gentleman from Rhode Island who was a restaurant owner. He works 12, 14 hours a day in the restaurant, and he developed a fairly rare kind of melanoma. And melanoma in general is hard to treat, but these mucosal melanomas that can start in mucosal surfaces, his starting in the sinuses, are particularly um, difficult to treat, and very frequently patients whose disease has spread has a survival of only a few months. He comes in with his wife, talks about his two kids, talks about trying to run this restaurant business, um, was basically told by his local doctor, never seen this disease before, you gotta go to the farmer. He comes in and is, is devastated with us, our first discussion about what is involved with his cancer. So without much else to do, we gave him the first uh, first drug that takes the breaks off the immune system called ipilimumab, or referred to as ipi for short. And his disease got worse and then slowly got smaller for a while, and that lasted for about six months before his disease started to take off again. And he started making plans for his family and figuring out who's going to take over his restaurant. Um, and then we were able to, uh, because this disease is very rare, we were still able to get him into a clinical trial of one of the other breaks to the immune system that we we're dealing with, which is called anti-PD-1. Now, you may have heard of anti PD1. It's gotten a lot of, um, a lot of information in the news recently. Um, not any fewer than eight companies are making drugs that target either PD1 or the, it's kind of our PDL1, one of the breaks to the immune system, and one of the breaks that was discovered at the Dana Farber. And with eight companies working on it and billions of dollars being put into it, we get a sense that this is important for cancer. Well, to make this important story, uh, with this treatment, he saw this mass on his arm that continued to grow for a while. And then one day he comes in and said, I, my entire body aches. And he was a triathlete, and he was still, I'm not a ballerina, I'm not a triathlete. Um, uh, so he was still uh, swimming and riding his bike and running, and he had severe pains. Well, we brought him into the hospital, we worked up. We, what we found out is that his thyroid had an immune re reaction against it. His thyroid wasn't working well. And then when the next few weeks, the tumor's arm melted away, and hit all of his tumors in his lungs disappeared, and knock on hopefully would here, uh, more than a year later, he's still in a complete response. And it's showing that maybe sometimes not one of the breaks to the immune system is important, but maybe you need to look at another break to the immune system. And so what comes out of this is our understanding of how to mutilate the immune cells. One of the themes also is that if we're going to ever use the C word, cure for cancer, the immune system is likely going to have to have an important role in that. We know that there's constantly the immune system, they're surveilling cancer cells, there's knocking it off, but that for cancer to grow into, in a person's body, there has to be one of these breaks that are on. The, the immune system has to be evaded in some way. And for us to understand what the breaks are for a particular patient, how to, how to, how to attack that break, how to combine certain breaks such as in that patient to have an effective response is exactly what we're trying to do. So at the Dana-Farber, what we've developed is understanding that this is not anything specific to one cancer. This is applicable to all cancers. Uh, Margaret Shipp, who's in the audience, is looking at, at Hodgkin's disease, uh, Kwok looking at lung cancer, that these are, are, are collaborations where we understand the genomics of, say, Hodgkin's disease and how the immune system is manipulated by that cancer and how we can take that break off and treat Hodgkin's disease now. And this is a modality that crosses all, all different kinds of cancers and is generalizable. So the Center for Immune Oncology is there to break down the natural barriers to disease centers or to the way we work to, to build teams to take modalities of treatment of how we take the breaks off the immune system and apply it to all cancers based on what break may be on for that particular patient's cancer, irrespective of what the diagnosis is. Um, and so the Energizer Bunny then, I use the term Energizer, sorry, the bunny <laughs> can keep going and going and going and offer the patient that ability when the break is off, the immune system continues to work and gives them the durable long-term benefit of turning a bad disease into a chronic disease and on the road to hopefully curing the patient. So thank you for your time. <laughs>